I like to fuel my adventures with real food. That's why this year I've set the intention to really limit my consumption of processed foods. So I'm not paying high prices for low nutrient products, creating unnecessary plastic waste, and filling my body with harmful mystery ingredients. In this pursuit, I've discovered it's surprisingly easy, affordable, and fun to make your own tortillas, artisan bread loaves, and soft pita bread from scratch. With roughly one $6 bag of organic flour, I've made multiple batches of each one of these staples. At farmer's markets, you could easily spend $8 to $12 on just one of these yummy treats. These are staples that make eating on the go much easier, and now you get to skip out on the hydrogenated oils, artificial flavorings, and preservatives for something that tastes and feels unbelievably better. It's been such a satisfying process, one I can't wait to share with you. Keep in mind, I started by following online recipes and slowly gained confidence and creativity with my own customizations, so I'm very grateful for all the foodie guidance that I'll link below. Stay tuned till the end because I'm saving the best for last. So what do you say? Let's get cooking. We're starting with my first attempt at homemade flour tortillas, which were way more forgiving than corn tortillas and come out so soft and perfectly chewy. I used them to make vegan green chile jackfruit tacos that were sublime, so I'll also share my easy meal prep friendly recipe with you here. It's such a versatile and clean dish that really hits the spot when you're craving takeout tacos. These tortillas come together with minimal ingredients, starting with just flour and salt. Snap, wait a minute, let me put some whisk up in it. Once your dry ingredients are combined, you simply add a mix of warm water and oil. All right, they say using your hands. I hope I don't regret this. While I was skeptical at first, it was really cool to see the dough come together. I would later find that this is the case with most dough creations. You gotta trust the process. Oh, snap. It's doughing. Whoa. I'm trying to be a homesteading girl, making all my own products in the van. I'm really, I'm really striving for it. Tortillas is our first step because those always have so much crap in them. We don't want that. We don't want to eat all of those weird things. We just want tortillas. She's looking beautiful, honestly. I'm actually pretty hype about this. This is super empowering. Like, if I want tacos, I should be able to whip up tacos. I don't need no tortillas, I just need flour, man. So nice just to be able to make whatever you need. So this is the point where you like knead it until it's all soft and beautiful. I ended up adding just a little more flour so it wasn't too sticky. I was so pleased by how clean my mixing bowl was once the dough was formed. These rolled out very nicely, then it was as simple as frying until golden. Looks like I'm slowly getting the hang of it. I've had some crispy mess ups, but I think they'll still taste just fine. Okay, first time making flour tortillas. Not bad. They are honestly beautiful and so tasty. Ooh! Once my tortillas were complete, I set to making my jackfruit filling. Simply pan fry the canned chunks until golden and crispy on each side. Then you can smash them down till they resemble the pulled pork and stringy chicken that usually accompanies green chile dishes. This meal is so simple since it's mainly flavored with salsa verde, although you can't go wrong with some smoked salt, onion powder, and other seasonings of choice. It's also amazing with some broth and taco seasoning. Jackfruit does a wonderful job of absorbing the flavors of whatever saucy business it's simmered in. I cook it covered to keep it from drying out too much. You know it's done once all the liquid is absorbed. Then it's as simple as serving with your favorite taco toppings. Look at that tortilla though, she beautiful. This is so comforting and can be easily reheated as a one pan lunch for a meal prep with minimal cleanup. The jackfruit is crispier upon reheating and you can shake it up each time with different veggies, like this okra which I seasoned with smoked paprika. Check out this beautiful dish. Customize it with shredded cabbage, greens, avocado, hot sauce, pickled veggies, whatever your heart desires. I later learned that canned jackfruit doesn't have very much protein, so this would pair really well with some beans of choice. Okay, this taco is literally everything I want like green chili Mexican food to be. Usually green chili is either pork, which I don't really eat a lot of, or chicken, and especially in recent years. I just really don't like the taste of poultry, but the jackfruit just like takes on the flavor of the salsa so well. It really is just the best. Now it's time to get that bread. From crunchy bruschettas and indulgent toast to breakfast egg sandwiches and soup creations of all kinds, bread makes a yummy, easy, and filling addition to any meal. And now it doesn't have to be so sinful, as we can not only serve it with nourishing foods, but know every simple ingredient that goes into it in the first place. 
This simple white bread comes together with four cups of all-purpose flour and one and a half teaspoons of salt all mixed together. Then mix your wet ingredients with two cups of warm water, one teaspoon of instant dry yeast, one tablespoon of olive oil, and one tablespoon of honey, sugar, or other sweetener to feed the yeast. Once well mixed, you can add everything together. I always feel like I'm doing something wrong here, and then it turns out amazing, every time. Once you've got a sticky dough, cover it with a clean towel and allow the bread to proof for at least a few hours. Some recipes need to be refrigerated during this process, others don't. Oh, you wanna try it? Okay, you can try it. I, I think it's just gonna taste really yeasty and bland, but I guess you're just in it for the calories, aren't you? Oh yeah, not like peanut butter, but it still hits the spot. <laughs> the longer it proofs, the more light and squishy the bread. It should be a lot bigger. Try not to handle it too much while coaxing it from the bowl or you'll crush all of your patiently proofed squishiness. I'm sure transferring to another bowl that's been oiled prior to proofing would help, but I'm working with a minimal kitchen here. Separate the loaves as delicately as possible. As you can see, I pretty much manhandled these and they still turned out great. Gently shape them into a nice ball. You can allow them to proof for another 10 to 20 minutes afterward to regain any squish that you strangled out of them. I happen to have access to a little oven for this, but I'll share more nomadic means of baking in a bit. You can customize your bread with seeds or herbs of your choosing, and it helps to lightly push them into the loaf so they can become incorporated in the crust. This recipe didn't require a Dutch oven, so I used my cast iron skillet instead. I was so surprised at how well this turned out. They were so beautiful and even tastier than they looked. I love how customizable they are. You can add olives, cheese, fresh herbs, garlic, nuts, seeds, seasonings, and the possibilities are truly endless with how you use it. I really enjoyed making breakfast sandwiches with some neighborhood eggs. Eventually, I did try my hand at an herby bread, adding some fresh oregano and rosemary to a whole wheat loaf. Whole wheat flour can be a little more tough and dry unless you mix it with white flour, but it provides more protein and a healthier source of complex carbohydrates. And I was still really happy with how this turned out. Does it smell good? Oh, it smells good, doesn't it? I'm now the proud owner of a Dutch oven, which makes for a really crispy crust. This big life upgrade will allow me to cook over fires on the road so I can continue my new bread making hobby on my adventures in the wilderness. <laughs> I ended up using some volunteer bok choy from the greenhouse to make a bomb breakfast sandwich with a stir fry spin using some foraged kingstrafaria mushrooms. Most of the mulch around the farm has been inoculated with this fungi, so I find them all over the place. Overall, I really liked the herby crust, but I'll probably mix it into the dry ingredients in the dough before proofing next time. She cute though! So we conquered the taco, but what about those big tortillas that are so handy for wraps, quesadillas, or burritos. This whole wheat tortilla recipe is super easy, soft, and linked down below. They are versatile enough to be served on the side of most dishes, making a lovely vessel for a handheld salad, or adding some more bulk and calories to grain bowls. They were delicious as a soft taco with pinto beans and fried plantains as well. Once again, I was a little skeptical as these didn't come together like other tortilla doughs I've made. I combined the whole wheat flour and oil first to form a crumbly mixture, then gradually added the warm water, which can be optionally sweetened with sugar, honey, agave, or any other sweetness of choice. Despite my doubts, this did come together as a good dough in the end. Once again, I was very happy with how clean this left my mixing bowl. And to my surprise, this divided nicely into 12 dough balls that made nice big tortillas. Honestly, the most time intensive part of this process is probably rolling out the tortillas and frying them. Just make sure you don't roll with an open water bottle. Yeah, not productive. If you had a little tortilla party with friends, family, and multiple stove burners going, I'm sure it would go a lot faster. I found listening to an audiobook made me a lot more patient with this process. Since the nomadic lifestyle makes library returns more complicated, I've really enjoyed using the free app Libby as a digital library. Once you have a thin round piece of dough, it's time to get frying. I used some coconut oil. These were very intuitive as the bubbles let you know when it's time to flip and these bubbled beautifully. I was really happy with how they turned out and considering how delicious and clean both the ingredients and preparations are, I can see myself making these on repeat. This salad simply had curried sweet 
sweet potato and cauliflower with pepitas, kalamata olives, and brassica blooms. You can do crispy chickpeas, hummus, or quinoa for some protein. Some vegan feta or your favorite saucy business could really amp up the flavor. By the way, this is how I plate my meals when not filming for you guys. Considering my lifestyle, I had to experiment with some stovetop bread as well, and homemade pita bread answered the call. It's so fluffy and versatile, tastes divine, and doesn't take that long to prove. It can also be conveniently made in an oven to avoid too much stovetop labor. This pita makes for an awesome base for packed lunches on any kind of big adventure. When playing in the kitchen, I paired it with an amazing vegan gluten-free falafel that I'll link below. Homemade hummus makes for an easy and delicious protein pairing, and it can be freestyled with any fresh ingredients or salads to make a satisfying meal. Really, pita is a killer bread for any occasion. I've linked the dough recipes that I've experimented with below. I recommend piecing them out in advance so they're even. This allows you to portion them out before rolling them into balls, and it gives them time to proof a bit more so they're nice and fluffy. While your pan heats, sprinkle some flour onto your rolling surface and smooth it out so the dough doesn't Stick. I've been repurposing this plastic bag that I was gifted some baked goodies in, but in the future I'll likely just be using one of my flexible cutting boards. I don't have a rolling pin, so I just use my Wicked Cool Tea Thermos, also so you can admire my National Park sticker game. I get it from different angles to work it into a perfect circle, and it's okay to work it a little bit with your fingers to get it even. Be nice and gentle as you pull it free. It may be a little thinner than you'd think, but they puff up while cooking. Oh my gosh, this pita bread is elite! Oh, she slays every time! Yes! And there's actually a little bit of seasoning left in this pan from my cauliflower, so it's gonna be seasoned pita bread. Damn! This is even better than authentic farmer's market pita that I've gotten from real deal Mediterranean chefs. You just can't beat the soft fluffiness of the fresh stuff. It's still excellent for a few days after, especially if you heat it up before eating. This is an irresistible delivery of any veggie, especially with some homemade hummus. Sometimes I use chickpeas and or northern white beans depending on what I can find. I can't wait to fill these with fresh seasonal produce both raw and cooked. Starting off strong with this curried cauliflower that I was trying to eat as fast as possible before it flowered. This made my belly so happy and it will make all your friends jealous if you don't share. I eventually experimented with whole wheat pita bread, as the pairing of whole grains and legumes used in hummus creates a complete protein. This also provides your body with complex carbs that keep you full and energized longer than simple carbs like white grains that have been stripped of their nutritional value. Still, I think there's a time and place for both, and either way, your body will thank you. A huge mile marker for me in my scratch cooking journey was this pizza dough. I read a few recipes and winged it. It felt so rewarding when it turned out fantastic. I did equal parts white and wheat flour and was really daring when I eyed a combo of active and instant yeast. This was the best vegan pizza I've ever had, which means I won't be paying for those vegan pizza prices anytime soon, especially when I can customize toppings like fresh arugula and brassica blooms. I'm super excited to try this in my Dutch oven over an open fire. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your healthy eating journey. My goal is to help you become a master foodie, freestyling your own nourishing meals with ease. I really hope this inspires you to swap some of your staples with some scratch cooking. You may discover a fun pastime, all while removing a long list of harmful additives from your diet. Please share this video with a friend and give it a thumbs up if these meals look tasty. And let me know what you'd like to cook next and what you'd like to see in my upcoming recipe framework ebooks. I did just release my first ebook, A Complete Beginner's Guide to Camping Trips, which is available to all of my top supporters on Patreon as well as for purchase on my website. Thank you so much for cooking with me. Until next time. Oh god, did I get dirt on it? This is what happens when I try to make things aesthetic, guys, out in the grass. Oh lord. Out loud. We like a seedy bread.